This is Twit. It is time to talk to our man in the driver's seat, Mr. Car Guy Sam Abul Samad, Principal Researcher at Guidehouse Insights. He's also the uh, podcaster that is the great Wheel Bearings podcaster at wheelbearings.media. And uh, your your uh, co-host, Robbie Roberto Baldwin, was in Munich last week. He was. was yeah, it? he spent the past week in Munich for the IAA Mobility Show. And oh. while he was there, he was he was hosted by uh, by BMW. Um, and uh, so they also did got to do first drives of the new BMW iX and the i4, BMW's two new electric vehicles. Um, I think. I think those drive impressions are still under embargo. I'm not sure when the embargo lifts, but uh, we'll definitely be talking about that on wheel bearings uh, as soon as that does, uh, as soon as that embargo does lift. Uh, is there a time of year where there there are all the you know because isn't don't the new cars come out right about now or next couple of months? And uh, that that used to be the case, uh, you know, back in the up until about well, probably the. Until the I internet, guess the late eighties. <laughs> but um, you know, since then, you know, since the nineties, you know, we've seen the the schedules basically kind of spread out all over, you know, throughout the year. And so vehicles now launch when they're ready. Um, ah. So there's no there's no specific time anymore. Um, yeah, I mean, it used to be a long time ago that uh, you know, beginning of September, you know, Labor Day weekend, car dealers would put up um, paper over their the windows of their their right. showrooms. You right. know, load in all the new cars and then take it all down and so exciting. Here's all the new the new model year you know vehicles and now it's just you know whenever it's ready is when they launch it. Um, but so that makes it more interesting you know, for some, us because there's always something new to talk about. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, you're not you don't just have one week of news a year. <laughs> right. right. So uh, it it definitely yeah, means we do have more to cover. Uh, but speaking of the IA Mobility Show, one of the the things that was announced there this week, uh, Mobileye, uh, Intel Intel CEO Pat Gelsinger did a keynote there, uh, and part of that keynote he had uh, Mobileye's CEO. Uh, Amnon Shashua, uh, come on. Uh, Mobileye is owned by Intel. They bought it in 2017 for 15 billion dollars. And Mobileye, um, they're, they've been uh, uh, one of the leaders in machine vision systems for driver assist. So most of the lane keeping systems, lane keeping assist that you have in, in most cars around the world today are powered by Mobileye's uh, chips and software. Uh, and over the last several years, Mobileye has also been working on automated driving systems, fully autonomous vehicles. And they, uh, at the, the show, they announced that in 2022, they're planning to launch their first commercial pilots of uh, robo-taxi services in Munich uh, and in Tel Aviv, where Mobileye is based. Um, and the, the, the program in Munich is going to be in partnership with a company called Sixt, uh, who if you've, if you've ever traveled in Europe, you're probably familiar yes, with them. Yes. They're a European rental car company, and uh, they also do uh, ride-hailing services, things like that. So they're going to be working with Sixt in, in Germany, and uh, they haven't said who, if any, partners they're going to have in, uh, in Israel. But one of the interesting things about this is you know, up until now, Mobileye's primarily been using the Ford Fusion Hybrid as their development platform vehicle for their for their system. Um, it's it's commonly used. You know, it's it's usually either Toyota or uh, Ford hybrid vehicles that are used because they have plenty of electrical power available from the hybrid system. They're uh, readily available, so everybody knows how to work on them. So they they often use those. But for production. They're using a different vehicle uh, known as the Neo ES8. Neo is a Chinese uh, EV startup that launched uh, several years ago. Uh, the ES8 is a three-row crossover, roughly the size of um, a Hyundai Palisade, Ford Explorer, you know, in that, in that size class. Um, and one of the interesting things about Neo is they are building all of their vehicles to support battery swapping. Um, so you can do fast charging and slow charging on them, but you can. they have also built out a network in China of battery swap stations that are fully automated. Now, you might remember back in 2014, Tesla showed off uh, battery swapping and made a made big deal about, you know, they're going to support battery swapping in their cars, and, and they did it in the Model S and the, the Model X, uh, but they only ever built one battery swap station, which was somewhere in the middle of the Central Valley of California, which is not particularly convenient uh, for anybody. And they've, they've never acknowledged this, but um, my friend um, Ed Niedermeyer, who wrote a book about Tesla uh, a couple of years ago, I think you I think you did an interview yeah, with yeah. him on Triangulation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Um, you know, one of the things that, that from his uh, research that came out of it, basically, it seems like the only reason they did that, that you know, they built the one battery swap station, is you know, so because there was a quirk in the rules in California that if your vehicle supported swapping, you got extra uh, EV credits that you oh, could sell. Yeah, and that's so, it. That's all. Huh? They never but, really intended but, to make it available. Right. But for NEO, they actually have made this available. I think they currently have about, uh, what is it, about 200 swap stations around China. Oh, interesting. Um, and they're building out a whole lot more. Um, you know, it's debatable. It's an instant fill up, right? How long does it take to swap the battery? It takes about three minutes to swap oh, the battery. So it's better than going to a so, gas station. So yeah, so if you're watching the video stream, you can see it over my shoulder, yeah. you know, you know, the demo of it. Um, the swap station is about the size of three parking spaces, um, and it's all fully automated. You know, so you you pull into it, and it drops the battery the mechanism. You know, comes in, drops the unscrews the battery, it drops down, moves it over, pulls in a freshly charged battery, puts it back up, and wow. uh, bolts it back in. But then and, you have somebody else's battery in your car. I mean, we think of the battery as being part of the that's, vehicle these that, days yeah that's that's one of the challenges there's a lot of other you know economic challenges with battery swapping um especially because you know every manufacturer's got different battery formats right. and different sizes and um you know whether it makes sense for one automaker to ha build out their own network of swap stations uh, you know the, like i said the economics are questionable it almost makes Where more sense actually, for a fleet than it does for individual owners exactly yeah. That's that's what I was just going to get to. Yeah. You know, commercial vehicles, robo taxis, makes perfect sense for them because sure. with a with a fleet, you've got all the same kind of vehicle. Typically, you can locate some battery swap stations around the city, you know, and and most of the time, those vehicles are operating, uh, you know, usually in a geographically limited area. So you can put in those swap stations. They're not very big, and you can then, um, you know, when it's time to to swap. Uh, when, or when you need a charge, especially with something like a robo taxi, you know, where um, you want to have maximum uptime, you don't want it sitting around for several hours a day charging. Uh, you want to, you know, you want to be able to get in and out, get back on the road, and maximize the utilization of that vehicle. Battery swapping actually makes perfect sense for that kind of vehicle. So I think it's, I think that's a big reason why Mobileye chose to go with Neo. Uh, because I think what they're going to do, they haven't officially announced that yet, but I think they're, we're probably going to see them put in um, a network of swap stations around Munich and around Tel Aviv uh, and use that you know, so that they can maximize the uptime for these vehicles, maximize the availability, yeah. um, because it, it just makes sense for that kind of use. Meanwhile, Chevy can't even figure out how, when and how it's going to swap my battery in my Chevy Bolt. So, so we're parking it outside, far away from the house, and charging it outside, and hoping it doesn't burst into flame. Um, and it, so I think, that's I an think example of how yet. hard it is to change a battery. They haven't figured out how to do yeah. it yet. Yeah. Well, it's it's not so much that it's a problem of of knowing how to change the battery, but they actually have to get more batteries and right. verify and know that their the batteries are good. Yeah. I mean, what, once once they have the batteries, you know, they, you can take it to the dealer. They can they can swap it in a couple of hours. They haven't even That's sent us a, a, so a letter yet. We still don't. You know, I only know about it from you. Uh, oh well, you know, we'll we'll figure this one out. I'm sure. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Mr. So. Sam Abul Samad, his batteries never need to be changed. He's running. <laughs> oh, on I don't know about that. Pure ATP. He is a principal <laughs> researcher at Kitehouse Insights. He's also got a great podcast if you haven't heard it. Uh, if you love vehicles and cars and automotive news, wheel bearings, look for it in your favorite uh, podcast client or go to wheelbearings.media. Sam, thanks so much. Always a pleasure. My pleasure. Go Leo. Niners. <laughs> Take care. Leo Laporte, the tech uh -huh. guy. <laughs>